Hi guys, welcome back to Next with Steph. This week's project is a picture frame that I found at a garage sale and I've turned it into a bookshelf. So if you're interested in this project, come with me and I'll show you how I put this together. I've started out by measuring and cutting the boards I'll need to build the sides of this shelf. I did a dry fit of each board as I cut them to make sure it'll be a perfect snug fit. I've decided I want one shelf and I want it to be movable. So I have these leftover IKEA shelf pegs that I found from another unit that I had. And I'm going to drill two rows of holes about one inch apart so that the shelf can be raised or lowered depending on what I want to display. So I've made a mark, I've uh, put a little piece of tape on the drill bit so that I know that's how far I want it to go in and then I'll be able to stop. I've also, just for a little added protection so I don't crack my tabletop here, I've put an extra uh, piece of scrap lumber just in case but I shouldn't really go through it anyways. So. so I gave it a little bit of a wiggle there because uh, I was finding that the pegs were a little tight. intentions aside, I ended up um, drilling all the way through the board in quite a few places. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of wood filler in here and let it dry and then I'll give that a quick sand. So it's been more than 15 minutes and this is dry. I'm going to give this another quick sand. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my nail gun to put the shelf together. This is the uh, product that I use to fill these holes. Just a quick 15 minute speed dry polyfill up. If you're interested in this product, I'll leave a link for it as well. So now that I've got it fitted here, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to add some wood glue before I attach the frame. I probably should have added some wood glue before I nailed these pieces together, but the glue on here will help with it anyways. Now that it's glued on, I'm going to go ahead and nail it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of wood filler on these holes and then I'm ready to paint. I'm going to be using a primer and paint in one. So I had a little bit of an issue when I was spray painting. Uh, the first 
paint that I used was this gloss gray trim clad rust paint and I love using trim clad paints. I find them really good quality, nice and thick, um, they dry fairly quickly, but I didn't like the color of this gray. It turned out being very greenish, at least in this particular project. So I wasn't happy with that, so I thought I'd try something lighter. And I tried this Beauty Tone uh, enamel gloss paint. And for this particular project, again, I really didn't like this. It came out very uh, watery and it was dripping on the project. Now, some of that could have been because I was doing this in my garage and it was really cold out there. And the instructions on this says that it should be between, it should be between 15 to 30 uh, degrees Celsius. So I, it was definitely colder than that. So I can't really blame just the product on that. Um, then I went to this uh, Trump clad gloss dark machine gray. Uh, I, I love, again, I, as I said, I love these trim clad paints and I found this was perfect. I loved it. And I must say, because I've got the three different layers of paint on there, there's a little bit of a marbling effect almost, which I really loved. I could have put another coat of this on and it, and it would have been solid. I kind of like it the way it is. It's got a bit of a, you know, a sort of like an aged look to it. So I'm really happy with this particular paint. So for the backer of the shelf, I've decided to go with this Tongue and Groove Pine. It's quarter inch thick, three inches wide. I'm just adding some Gorilla Wood Glue and putting the pieces together. It's just a pressure fit, so I'm not gonna have to worry about clamps. I'm gonna give this about 15 minutes to dry and it'll be ready to paint. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a coat of white, just acrylic crafters paint, and I'm gonna give this wood a white wash. If it gets a little thick, I'm just gonna add a little water just to kind of thin it out and spread it. Kind of nice using these foam brushes because you can push them down into the grooves of the tongue and groove here. And it's drying quickly, so uh, before it does that, I'm gonna give each section like, a little wipe. And then continue on. There we go. I'll just let that dry. Now that the paint is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over to the back. And I'm going to put our tongue and groove behind board the backer on here. And I'm just gonna use some small finishing type of nails to attach this to the back. So a little tip that I, that I learned, I saw it on a video recently and I wish I knew where I saw it or I'd, I'd give credit to them, but um, apparently if you don't want the wood to split, then you just take your nail and you hit the edge of it. I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to go through the wood here. But um, if you take the sharp point off the nail, 
it actually won't split the wood.